Okay, so we've seen how you can get um, a percent composition based on the molecular formula, but all compounds with the same empirical formula will have the same percent composition. What we want to do now is we want to go backwards. If we are given the percent composition, because we can get that kind of information from the lab, can we use that then to calculate the empirical formula? And absolutely positively we can, because, as you may recall, if we think about the examples we looked in, at in the last video, if you know that there is a compound with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and you know the percentages of each, you can use those percentages to figure out how many atoms of each, based on how many moles of each there are in the compound. So if I'm given a compound that has 39.99% carbon, 6.73% hydrogen, and 53.28% oxygen, that information is the percentage by mass of each of these elements regardless of the sample size. So if I have a 100 gram sample, and that is a great assumption when you're given percentage information, that means there will be 39.99 grams of carbon, 6.73 grams of hydrogen, and 53.28 grams of oxygen. Now these are the grams of each of these elements, and the formula, these subscripts are not grams of each of these. Notice I've just labeled them as XYZ sort of to hold the place. The XYZ subscripts are moles. These are the mole ratios. They're not the grams. So my strategy is to convert each of these grams to moles and then find the ratios. So that's always going to be my, my strategy. If I'm given percent composition by mass, assuming a 100 gram sample means that's how many grams of each element I have, convert that grams to moles for each one, and then mathematically find out what those ratios are by, by dividing. Um, these are essentially the steps that I take, grams to moles and moles to ratios. Let's look at a specific example. All right, here's our problem. A hydrocarbon, that's a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen only, is found to contain 82.66% carbon and no other element except for hydrogen. What is the empirical formula of the substance? I like to, I'm a very visual person, so I like to start thinking of this as my answer will look something like this, where my X and my Y are my subscripts. They're, they should be whole numbers when I'm finished. In this particular compound, it is 82.66% carbon, no other element except for hydrogen. And so it's a matter of, with that percentage, assuming 100 grams, and so my starting place would be 82.66 grams of carbon, and then for my grams of hydrogen, the percentage is 100 minus the 82.66, and so my starting place would be 17.34 grams of hydrogen. Watch your sig figs. Both of these, um, these were found by subtracting the 82.66 from 100, and so I have two decimal places. My strategy is that I go from grams to moles and moles to ratios. You might want to keep that in mind. And so the first step is to convert from grams to moles. You'll notice that I am looking at the elemental species, and so even though hydrogen in a jar would be diatomic, I use the molar mass for a, the element hydrogen, the, the atom hydrogen, because I have a certain number of hydrogens in this compound that's not related to a jar of H2 diatomic. So I do use the 1.01. .01. I'm also going to watch my sig figs once I punch these into my calculator. I want to record the answer to an extra sig fig until I get to the end, or m probably a better technique would be to leave these numbers in my calculator. So this is what I'm going to get. You can check it yourself uh, separately. All right, what I have here are extra significant figures, and I do want to keep extra at this point. If you round these intermediate values too short, then you're going to run into significant figure errors later when you go to get your ratios. Now what do I mean by getting my ratios? Well, I know that, that my ratios are whole numbers, and so the math trick to get my ratios is to take and divide all of your numerical values for moles by whoever's the smallest. So I would divide the 6.8826 divided by 6.8826. That ratio is 1. And then I would divide the 17.168 by my smallest, 6.882, 
and find that ratio. And that ratio is 2.494. All right, mathematically, why I did this is because this answer, at this point, this answer, these numbers are my subscript. I mean, literally, I have a 6.8826 carbons for every 17.164 hydrogens. Those are the mole to moles that I have, the moles of each carbon and hydrogen that I have. But we don't write the formula like this. We write it with whole numbers. So to get the ratios, essentially you're just employing a math trick to get the smallest whole number ratios here. And I know that the smallest whole number ratio is 1, so if I divide each of these by my smallest, I will have a 1. This will divide out to give me 1. And then the hope is that this will divide out to give me a whole number ratio, but in this case it gives me 2.494. Now if this gave me a whole number ratio that was within .05 of the whole number, I would be finished and that would be my answer. But 2.494 is not within .05 of a whole number. And so mathematically, my ratio is 1 to 2 and a half, but that's not a whole number ratio. The whole number ratio is to take these, these values and multiply them each by 2. And if I multiply each by 2, then that will still give me the ratio. This would be 2 to take this value times 2, I get 4.988 actually 4.989. This is still the, the correct ratio, but now I might have whole numbers. And I have the whole number 2, and then 4.98 is indeed within .05 of the whole number 5, and so my correct answer is C2H5 for my empirical formula. That is my empirical formula. It is not necessarily my molecular formula. I'd need more information if I needed to find the molecular, molecular formula. But it is my empirical formula. It's the smallest whole number ratio of carbons to hydrogen based on this percent composition which is given. The other way to ask this question, if instead of giving percent composition, the problem goes ahead and gives grams to start with, if you are given actual grams of the substance to begin with, then that would be the numbers that we put here for the grams of each element. You would still employ the same steps. Given that many grams of carbons and hydrogens, for example, you would change them to moles and then find the mole ratios. So it's exactly the same problem if instead of giving percent compositions, you're giving grams to start with. You should practice these.